Hi guys, this is Saptashi here and today I am back with a tutorial on Generative Adversarial Network or GAN. I am going to use a Jupyter Notebook environment, so follow a learning by doing approach. Nevertheless, I am going to discuss some of the important theoretical underpinning of concepts of GAN, follow it up with an end-to-end -end implementation using TensorFlow. So, it is one of the coolest and newest addition to the deep learning family was proposed by Jan Goodfellow in the year 2014. The objective of GAN, like any other generative model, is to produce synthetic samples which are as close to real world as possible or as realistic as possible. And GAN learns this trick of producing realistic samples in an adversarial setup. So, that is why the name generative adversarial. Why network? Because it employs two neural networks one known as generator, another known as discriminator. Now, actually they compete with each other. How? They use a loss function which are actually in opposite direction to each other. So, that way actually the training of GAN happens where both the generator and the discriminator participates. One the, once the GAN has been trained, I go into a generation phase of GAN where the discriminator can be removed, only the generator can be used to produce realistic samples. Okay. I think this description will be more clear if I look at the following diagram. Okay. So, I am only focusing on the training phase. Here the task at hand is the real world data comes from this MNIST data set which consists of handwritten digits. So, after the GAN is adequately trained, it should be able to generate strokes or scribbles whatever I call which is similar to this handwritten digits. Okay. So, you can very clearly see that there are two neural networks. So, this is the generator, this is the discriminator. The generator actually takes a noise as an input and returns an image as an output. Okay? The image needs to be having the same shape or dimension as that of the original images. You might be wondering that why we are giving a noise as an input. The reason is if we do not give a noise as an input, the generator may end up uh, creating in a samples which are very similar to what we have or replicas of what we have seen in the real world. So, this is not something we want to do. Okay? Now, as I said the discriminator works as a classifier or the second neural network actually works as a classifier and there are only two classes involved. So, where what are these two classes? So, one class comes from this real data through sampling. So, we sample some data from the real world, we add uh, the class level to be 1 and we also get the data generated from the generator. We call this as fake image okay, or imprecise image, give it a class level of 0 and this data set is used for training of the discriminator. What is the objective of the discriminator? The discriminator wants to identify the real images to be class 1 or real image and the images generated by the generator as fake images or class 0 images. Okay. Now, this is how the training of discriminator happens, only the discriminator network is involved over here. What about the training of the generator? So, here actually we will see if you follow this you know blue uh, rectangle dash rectangle, uh, the discriminator also involved over, over here. Okay. So, what the generator wants is that it wants the images that it is generating should be classified as one or genuine images. Okay. So, this is the objective of the second neural network. So, as you can understand, uh, it has to predict this. So, the discriminator network is also required. However, I cannot make both of them, uh, make, make both the weights changeable or more the weights variable at the same time. So, when I am training the generator, I usually keep the discriminator weight as non-trainable or fixed. Otherwise, it will be a moving target and con convergence will be very very slow okay so this is the you know training phase once the training phase is over and uh, the generator part has sufficiently learned it can be used uh, uh, when it can take a noise as an input and can return realistic images some of the important functions that we saw over here was or we'll use over here a loading of real data so uh, we'll get the data from mnist generate real data so in this case I am going to sample something from the MNIST data set and going to add a level of class 1. 
generate noise data for giving an input to the generator it is not necessarily that it is a single vector I can give a collection of vector as an input ok. And generate fact fake data will take the image produced by the generator at a class level 0 and both this generate real data and generate fake data will be used to create the data set for the discriminator. Now let us load the libraries ok and then we will go and create the models one by one ok. So, they are imported now let us go and look at the generator. So, the generator actually takes an input which is a uh, latent dimension. So, often the dimension that we take from noise is called uh, having latent dimension because the dimension it is not observable ok and uh, it will return an image which is of size 28 into 28 because that is what is the dimension of a simple MNIST images ok. So, let us also quickly test the generator. Well, how do we do that? So, we will just you know feed a noise, we will create a noise vector in this case we are taking the latent dimension as 100, give it to the generator ok, create by creating the generator model and see what kind of image it is creating. So, you can see that it is creating kind of a random noise, uh, but more important thing is that you know it is of the dimension 28 to 28. Now, let us create the discriminator model which will be uh, required for identifying the real class to be class 1 and the fake class to be class 0 ok. And it is a regular convolutional network. So, you have the conv layers and then you have uh, your flatten and dense layer at the end because you will ultimately give a probability which is a probability of the image being a real class ok. So, that is the output. So, you will have the sigmoid and you will use an Adam optimizer which is one of the best optimizers uh, for uh, neural networks or deep learning uh, frameworks. And the loss that you are going to use is binary cross entropy because you know you are dealing with two classes ok. So, let me create the discriminator now ok. Now, I am going to need to create the combined model. So, why this combined model is required? This is required to train the generator because if you remember from our earlier discussion that training of the generator also needs the discriminator. So, this takes two inputs one the generator model another the discriminator model and the first statement that we execute over here is we make uh, the discriminator model non trainable right. So, we discuss that we will make uh, the weights constant for the discriminator ok and then we add both the G model and the D model that is generator and discriminator I am going to use same Adam optimizer and the binary cross entropy function ok. So, there will be a difference in loss function which we discussed earlier which we will also see when we will go to the training function. Now, let us look at uh, loading the data. So, we are going to use the MNIST's load data function over here and basically it returns four things one is train x uh, and corresponding labels in train y then test x and test y. However, uh, I just need the images I do not need the labels neither I need the testing data. So, all others I have used at as underscores ok. Why this expand dimension? Expand dimension is used uh, you know so that uh, if you have maybe a 2D uh, vector you can make it 3D and so on and so forth. So, why do we need that? Because if you have a 3D images right the collection of 3D images actually make a 4D image ok. So, we to accommodate that we are just expanding the dimension and we are also scaling the values between 0 to 1 by dividing by 255. So, my samples are loaded and some pre processing is done. Now, I am going to implement the generate real samples right. Uh, so, this is the class 1 data. So, this takes the data set as an input and how many samples I uh, want to generate. So, this will be dependent on the batch size ok. So, uh, what it is going to return is the x that is the images and y that is a series of 1. So, if I am uh, you know getting a 40 or 50 images from the data set ok that many ones I am going to create and generate uh, this real samples ok. So, let me run this as well. Now, let us generate input vector. So, input vector for the generator ok. So, these are going to be noise, but again uh, I am going to create. So, if, if my latent dimension is 100 and n samples is 10. 
so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create 10 noise vectors which will have 100 dimensions each okay so this is uh, the generate latent functions uh, objective now i'm going to generate fake samples so it will not only need the latent dimension g model uh, uh, also the n sample okay so basically you know i will generate latent points give it as a feedback uh, to the or, or input to the generator model okay i will take the output okay so these are my images i will hold them in x and y are going to be set of zeros because this i am going to treat as class zero okay so again let me run this now one of the most important methods which is the training method of gan okay so what i am going to do over here is first of all just look at this that it has got two loops okay so one loop is for number of epochs so you know that the entire neural network learns through epochs after epoch okay so as it learns from one iteration to another iteration the actually the neural network learns the structure or pattern in the data and remembers them through its weights okay uh, so uh, the first uh, outer loop is for number of epochs the inner loop is for number of batches so you know that uh, training the network with the entire set of observations is not very efficient so what we do instead is we break them into batches and train okay so the batch size that we have taken over here is 256 and uh, mnist has a data of 60000 samples so it turns out that i will need around 234 batches to cover this 60000 samples okay so inside the batch what i am going to do is i am first going to generate real samples and how many real samples I am going to create? So, if my batch size uh, is 256, I am going to create 128 uh, uh, real sample, labeling it as class 1. Similarly, I am going to create fake samples from the generator model using this latent dimension. How many? Again, 128. So, my data is right now perfectly balanced. So, I have this in x real and x fake, y real and y fake. What I need to do is I need to vertically stack them in one variable. Uh, so, I am taking x real and x fake in, uh, in x and y real and y fake in y. Now, I am going to tell, uh, you know, train the discriminator because my data set for the discriminator is ready. Okay? And I can simply use a train on batch function. This just returns the loss function's value in the D loss. Okay? Uh, now, let us look at the generator. Okay. For generator, I am again generating the input uh, using this generate latent points and my output is going to be a set of ones because the, as I said, the generator wants the images produced by it to be classified as one. So, that is why I am using it as one and the loss function is also going to be accordingly. So, I am going to train on x GAN. So, which will go through the generator, uh, create the you know uh, images, will take to discriminator, create the y GAN, and on that uh, the g loss is going to be calculated. Okay. Now let's uh, go to the actual training part. Okay. So there are few things that we are going to define. So in this case, we are using a latent dimension of hundred. Okay. And we are creating you know this d model, g model, GAN model, and so on and so forth. I am not going to run the train because it may take some time. So, though I have uh, kept my notebook to be GPU enabled, which you should always do because you know it will fasten it by you know 10 to 20 times. Okay? But also what I have done is I actually have saved this. Okay? I actually have saved this model in Kaggle output. Okay? So, I will just need this for you know testing the generator so let me just initialize this this will be required when i have you know just trained the generator but as i have already stored uh, the generator model okay so i i uh, need not again uh, use the model after training so what i'm going to do instead is i am going to load it from the same path okay same generator model and i have run it for 25 times if you have run for more times more realistic samples will be generated and I am taking a sample of 16, okay, taking a sample of 16 and I am giving an, an input to generator. So, this generator actually has trained on this discriminator loss and generator loss for 25 epochs, okay. So, now let me uh, run this, okay. So, if the images are generated, you see 
that definitely this is much better than what we had initially right. So, you see that certain pattern are image uh, generating. So, you can see that maybe this looks like 6, this looks like 8, this looks like 9, this looks like 3. So, many of the easier digits it has started generating ok and as you train for many more epochs this can give you very good results ok. So, uh, I actually tell that you know this generative models has magical capabilities if trained uh, really well uh, with realistic data, it can probably write poetry, uh, you know it can probably draw pictures and actually you know it is being used for uh, uh, drawing of pictures, it can generate music ok. So, I hope uh, you know you got a good understanding, however I will highly recommend that you run this end to end ok, try changing little bit uh, things here and there, try with other data set and uh, you know you will be a master of GAN. Okay. So, thanks guys for watching this video, uh, thanks for your uh, encouragement and patronage, uh, please uh, you know, give your likes, comments and subscribe generously. Thanks guys, uh, watch you again soon.